Hey ho! So this is a Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, the Arcane Brotherhood. Like what I'm doing with the Arcane Brotherhood, okay? I haven't done a video in a while. I got so much things going on Kickstarter. My daughter's got her little office right here. She's actually got a real job. But anyway, but she's off the office now, so I can do a video. And I'm still doing the playthroughs though, so check those out. They're, this is This is going off of that. So this is about the Arcane Brotherhood. And just so you know, I create my own you know, I change it. I change it based on what I want. So this isn't really about exactly explaining the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden accurately to you. This is about how I am DMing it and, and then just showing you my thought process. So you you as a DM can take, you know, you take something and you make it your own. That's that's the whole goal of what I'm teaching here. Okay, and I, uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is great. So, okay, so um, I'm doing Wizards of the Brotherhood now and I've been having a hard time where I'm going to place them, how I fit them in, you know, in the story. And, um, because, you know, the way they had it, they're all split up. They're all doing their own things. And I'm just like, I don't know, where do I want to put them? How do I want to put them? Um, do, how are they connected, you know? So this is uh, just one of some old map I found on the internet. It looks pretty cool. And um, so they, you know, the characters have gone from Redmond to Lonelywood to Tourmaline to Targos. And then they skipped Bryn Chander and went down to Goodmead. And Dugan's Hole, and then came to Bryn Chander. So they're at Bryn Chander now. And everything I've done is Winter Dread, horrible human sacrifice. Oral is implementing um, human sacrifice wherever she can. She basically wants to get rid of everyone, right? And create this as her winter wonderland. And in Targos, she used the, um, you know, the evil dude there to try to control the towns and blah, blah, blah. So the, the Arcane Brotherhood of Wizards. I... There's a, there's a lot of directions to go in this story, right? But the main one is the Lost City. They're going to the Lost City. That has the that that whatever I forgot the name of the device, but it's some powerful magical device. To me, that's a it's a weather controller. If Oral gets her hands on that weather controller, she's going to become even more powerful because she just runs that and she doesn't need to do her nightly, you know, winter thing. And she'll become even more powerful in the region, okay? So that's the that's sort of like the end goal. Not even it's not even her place. As the lost city is the end goal. Um, although I have her place in there as well. But that's so, so. The Arcane Brotherhood has discovered it through Umberly. Umberly, I also have included. Um, where is it? Here, so you can see the gods. I, I just I found the these gods on Forgotten Realms. You know, I'm not totally familiar with. Them. You know, I've been playing 5e and I played Advanced Dungeons Dragons. I did not play 3 or 4, so I just don't know that much about the Forgotten Realms. I mean, I know, you know, surface stuff. Anyway, I looked it up and Malor, God of the Hunt, Talos, God of the Storms, Umberly, Wrathful Goddess of the Sea, they are all in cahoots and jealous and connected with Oral. So I wanted those to be the gods that are interacting here. And I took out Osmodeus and I don't know if there's another one, but I took them out, the devil stuff, because I wanted it to be this little pantheon of... of jealous gods fighting each other um they encountered one priest young priest for talos and you know he was very annoying and and uh, the our our cleric here had to deal with him and, and that was fun um umberly is the one who made the deal with the arcane brotherhood of wizards and freed them from the backstory of another character so one of the characters has a tie in you know a little bit of memory um amnesia memory thing where these wizards were on the Duchess. You know, the Duchess is the uh, the ship that's frozen in the le in the uh, sea of moving ice. And so um, for my story, Umberly made a deal with them to free them. And if they did, then they would, um, you know, go. She told them about the lost city, go there, get that, th you know, get the weather controlling thing or destroy it. Because, you know, Umberly knows that if Oral got it, um, that... Um, that would be bad. Oral doesn't know about it yet, so that's another thing. And she's going to discover it probably through the characters or through um, the, the, the direction they're going, whatever. So in the the wizards are sort of focused or centered now on East Haven. One of them is at Cair de Naval with, um, with the with the Malor of the Hunt cult. It used to be Osmodeus in the book. I've changed it to Malor of the Hunt. They are hunting frost maidens, you know, these, these tough knights. Let me show you a little minis I made of them. Uh, that's not it. 
Uh, let me pop this up. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Thought I had this ready. So I made these little miniatures for them, but I just want to show you because they're way cool. These are on my website. Now you can get the this PDF for free. You just sign up as a member. But if you want to um, get any of my original minis, you got to become a patron. Um, so if you're, you know, these are all the kind of like the minis I have on there are my originals or I'm the trust main. I mean, some are not original, so those are, I put, make free, but these are my, um, knights they're going to counter. They're crazy berserker kind of knights because they've got shardlin swords, so they're a little mad. Um, but these are the Mallor of the Hunt. They, they they roam around the Caradine of all. You know, there's a couple of uh, Frostmans already hung up dead. And, um, oh, and this is the leader. This dude and her couple tieflings serve Mallor of the Hunt. They may or may not, you know, work with the characters. Depends on how the how the discussions go. Uh, they may assign them as uh, the next new hunt. You know, maybe exciting because they love the hunt. Okay, so. Uh, that's that. And they are at Kerr Deneval. And one of the wizards is there, um, uh, Avarice, like she is in the in the, in the Rhyme of the Frostmane. But she doesn't leave. She She's using them, and she wants them to go with her. She's still kind of persuading them to go and deal with um, the Lost City, find Avarice. So that's going to be, to me, a powerful um, fight sequence, I think, a high-level fight sequence. Um because they're getting six level, they're getting pretty tough. Valene is the one. Okay, so Nas Latimer is pretty much what she is. She stole the missing orb from Valene, and she's the ghost on the Isle where Oral is. That's fine. I, I'm gonna leave that simple enough. Uh, Valene, or Valene, I don't know. Valene, 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 and Macradius and Zahn have a connection now. Macradius, Macradius. Okay, Valene is obviously frustrated. She doesn't have her orb anymore, so she's very weak. Macredius, um, he does get killed. In, I put it in East Haven. I, don't, I think it's in East Haven, the original. I don't know. But um, so what happens there uh, with Zahn? So Zahn is not a simula simulacrum. He's not a clone or whatever. I, I took that out. I just, it just doesn't interest me. It's too wacky. He is the apprentice of Macredius. And so he's, he, he has a journal here where he's trying to say, I'm, I, I, I'm going to get the star, summer star working with a second ring around it to control its power. I'm going to prove myself worthy to Macredius. You know, of course, he's dead there and he's burnt. He, he failed. But this note is going to be left there as a, a clue um, about the summer star. And you need a third ring. Hopefully they'll figure out if two was enough, maybe a third. And they control the controls it. And they, they realize that this is a, a minor prototype device of the device at the lost city they're going to learn that first by it, it, they got to go to the, find the lost spire which is where they got this one and the lost spire will then lead them to the lost city so that's how i'm going to do that so that's going to be fun and of course oral is going to catch on at that point that they're you know they're looking for something and she catches on when they if they start the summer star the summer star makes her realize something out there can control the weather in a more per permanent fashion than she does Okay, so that's what that is. And Macredius went back to East Haven. And of course, the Black Cabin is going to be near East Haven. He went back there to get more, to get a, find a tinkerer to help fix the Summer Star. And to get some more, like, frozen dead as his zombie servants. And in his hubris, he kind of stayed at the Rich Hotel. And Oral knew, what, or not Oral, but the Frostmans knew what he was doing. Didn't like it that he was taking her human frozen sacrifices. And, of course, they caught him and, and burned him at the stake, which is the worst insult to them, is to be burned. So that's what happened to Macredius. Valene, she's hiding. She saw what they did to Macredius. She's in East Haven. Uh, let me get this up out. Let's say this is East Haven. And she's hiding around here because that is where the, um, the Dwergar are terrorizing the town. Let's see, so I'm trying to tie in everything. Um... And give them options on which direction they want to go. They could go this way, that way. You know, they can go to the wizard way. They can go the Dorgar way. They could go up to Caradineval with the, um, um, which is what they're they're trying to decide here in the next adventure today, which is tonight. Um, also, let me show you this little extra little roll twenty thing here. This is my lighting. See, 
So they got lanterns, obviously. The town is trying to light itself. But, you know, the people, the players, this is how they see East Haven when they come around. So if they go searching around here, you know, trying to find out what's going on, um, this is what they're going to see. Okay. And, yeah, I definitely... Oh, and, and the way I do this, I'm sure probably most of you know how I do it, but I'll just go ahead and run through is see i use night vision uh for each of the characters as a you know um they can see not just it's not for night vision it's for them just seeing a certain distance in the dark you know uh, in a twilight you know of, a, of a outdoors so it's and i put gray and dimming and i started at one feet you know <laughs> if they have a torch obviously i can turn on bright light and give them that little short range but he has dancing lights as well, so he may use you know three of these. I only got one out right now. You can just copy and paste that. Um, anyway, so that's how I make the maps or the lighting. And these maps, I've I increase the size of these maps by the way, so that I can sort of fit the minis on there a little better. So the dwarves are, are 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 haunting this area. And if you know the original map, let's just go to this. Um, the sun blight is down here, right? And so they're they're going up to the Dorgar here, or the, the Dorgar have an, I'm going to put the outpost like here somewhere. Oh, I should move that right now. I know where is that outpost? Or where did I put it? Uh, where is it? Oh, it's over by the Cairn, right? It was over here somewhere. Whatever. I I moved it. Well, I've moved things around. See, like I've, I moved the black cabin to, to to this location, and then the lost spire is right here. And then the you know the Ithran, the lost city is over here, so um, I, I you know one sort of that's the finale there, that whole thing. Hopefully they'll go to East Haven and then go to the the outpost. Where is the outpost? Wait, I have not used Daryl Moral. I didn't like that one with the the frost giants. I moved these I think a little closer. I'm not sure. Okay, well, I don't see the outpost thing. But anyway, the outpost is here. Sunblight's here. Hopefully they'll get caught onto the. The, the Dwargar here and go that way back down to to discover um, the Dwargar because the Dwargar are terrorizing the people and the way I've discovered this it's just funny how you don't you see things I don't really read very I don't have reading comprehension very well I have writing comprehension so when I when I type things out I have a better things stick so this right here I was typing out the Dwargar Mind Master didn't even know this even though i've probably read it a few times but as i type it out i see mind mastery look at that so they can you know as they're invisible or hiding or what are shrunk or whatever they can cause you to suddenly attack your friend or your your cohort or your comrade um especially the low levels and so the low levels the guardsmen and the farmers are all like look, think of the husband and wife you know the husband suddenly attacks his wife and she he doesn't know why that's how terrifying you know they think there's a ghost there possessing them so all the people in that area in east haven are fled and the door guard now have this whole area to themselves to to loot and and you know take their time and steal whatever they want so that's kind of what's going on there and everyone's too afraid to go in that area the only people that go is oral when she wants or not oral but her frost manes when she wants to do sacrifices to um to um on this hill here she's you know during the day or twilight they, they do sacrifices there uh, frozen sacrifices so there's frozen there's frozen bodies up here so there's that okay so uh i just want to get a bigger picture again that the zoom in okay so so valaine and is here mccrady and she's hiding she uses her Leeman's tiny hut and her her arcane eye, because she's spying on the on the on the Dwargar. So she knows the, who they are. Well, she knows the Dwargar are there, and they're doing what they're doing. So she's very curious. So I figured this out. You know, I looked at this and said, "Oh, she's got Liam's tiny hut. She's got arcane eye. I I know she's spying on them. She's desperate. She's hiding there. She's wondering what they're up to. And at this point, I, you know, I hope that the she spots the players, spies on them, and she has her little." In case there's a battle, I'll have her have some zombies. But she wants to kind of work with them, or you know, she's gonna, she's going to come off as being really weak and evil, so and annoying. But if they join with her, then she'll help them and give them info about the door bar or whatever. But she's going to be very, um, very lazy and or you know, 
kind of betrayal y, uh, you know, and then, then, then apologetic and kind of just annoy them, you know, kind of thing where she leads them into danger but does nothing to help them, kind of thing. Because she's too weak. Um, so she's going to be there doing that. Okay, so that's 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 the Brotherhood right there. By the way, they were at the Duchess. They were prisoners. Um, Umberly made a deal with them because of Oral, hate, the hatred of Oral, to free them. So she, Umberly brought the White Dragon in to destroy the Duchess and free the wizards. And so the wizards got free. Um, and the dragon doesn't really see the wizards. He's just being led by Umberly or, she, or he or she. Arcanacanix or whatever, or maybe an adult white dragon. Depends on when the player, if the players go there, whenever they go there, at what level, I'll put it at that level of a dragon, white dragon staying there. I'm not going to put the ancient white dragon there because that's not, that's just too small. I'm having the ancient white dragon take over Rebel's End because I figure Rebel's End is isolated now because of this winter dread, and the ancient dragon said, I'm going to take it out. So just, and that's the ancient dragon's lair. So if they want to go there, they can. I don't know if they will. But, um, because that's a cool, big, awesome ancient dragon, ancient white dragon lair. So the Duchess is going to be just an adult dragon lair, like a, a, sibling, a child offspring of, of the ancient white dragon. And but for one of the characters, they they were a sailor on it. They have amnesia now, but they you know they escaped. Only only that character Azul and the captain escaped, but Azul ended up having to you know survive with cannibalism. To, you know, and so the captain is now a ghost haunting as Azul. But the only way to free him is by going back to the Duchess and taking the treasure. Because Captain, you know, someone besides the stupid dragon needs to have the treasure. And that's what the ghost captain is angry about. So there's that. So that's another pool. So they're, they're at Bryn Shander now. And I'm pretty excited that they have, there's a pool here of different storylines that they can take. And I have no idea why. Well, kind of, I'm suspecting they're going to go to East Haven. But... At Bryn Shander, they now have the option to go to the Duchess and figure out what's going on there. Because the someone's going to... They already kind of know, but I'm going to remind them. Because it's been a while. We've been a little off um, taking, taking a break. So i got to re reestablish some of the storylines that they've kind of forgotten about. Um, so I'm going to remind them of that one. They want to go to East Haven to save that town. Because they know that one's in trouble. And Bryn Shander would like to you know, reopen the communications with them. They also know about Cara Dineval. They don't know about it specifically, but they know they they know it's like these are two sort of old royal um, castle areas, and so they're kind of intrigued by checking those out. They know that the pilgrims from Bryn Shander have been led astray, led down through you know the past to escape, um, but none of them have ever returned to say you know what has happened to them. So they know that there's people dying. The pilgrims have been going and dying and getting captured or taken or something. So they know about that as well. Um, and then of course, if they go to East Haven, they can be led either up here. They could be led by, um, Valaine or the Dwargar to go south. I probably want to make them go south and not worry about this yet, but it'll come up at some point. Um, and definitely at Kara Kurnig, I want to, rem I want to bring up the Black Cabin, you know, the, the, the wizards going that way and doing something. And I, I haven't done the cauldron with the hag in it, you know, where she's got the cauldron. But they're getting to a certain level where that may not be uh, necessary, you know, and they, they, we could just go on with the story. I do like it, so I'd like to play that little layer, but that does feel like a lower level, like a third or fourth level adventure. And though I could make her more powerful, I, I kind of am getting a little excited about the storyline, So, and I don't want too many more offshoot things. I'd rather them just get on with the story because it's starting to build, um, you know, the plots. And they've had a lot of little adventures, a lot of little things you know that they've been going through but anyway we'll see what happens um but that's how i've gotten because i've had a hard time with arcane brotherhood like i i was uh, there were many times there where i was just gonna not play them i didn't want to deal with i didn't like how avarice in the book just was she was here and then she leaves and then i don't like the way that it played out at the end where they were kind of popping up whenever i wanted it to be more um you know whatever my my style whatever that is i mean uh, I didn't. I just didn't. It wasn't for me. What what was what? How they came in to the story? I felt like they were um, um, they were brought in at a point to carry to to start the story again. To you know, as opposed to really being stuck in this world and dealing with their situ their own situation, and then they are and then you encounter them. You know, uh, kind of a thing. All right. So that's 
that's me doing this little ding a ding. Um, and I hope it just kind of little gave you some ideas and just was fun to listen to because I like just listening to people talk about D and D stuff and what they're doing and how they're doing it. And, all right, um, that's it. Thanks for watching and um, please comment, comment or like, just to encourage me to do more. And um, you know, critique me is fine. I, I know, I know, I know a few, <laughs> but I'm just doing it my way and I'm just just blabbing on. All right, thanks for watching.